All right, welcome back. Um, in the last video, we figured out what our unrestrained deformations were. Um, they, where were they? They're right here. And um, so we figured out what our unrestrained deformations were, and these three values that we got corresponded to the degree of freedoms. Uh, one, actually, let me do them in green because they're the unrestrained, right? One, two, and three. And in this video, we're actually going to figure out what our restrained reactions are. And for that, we need our S sub R U matrix, our delta sub U matrix, and our joint load restrained matrix. Now, our S sub R U matrix comes from this big S sub C matrix. Remember, our S sub R U matrix is this 7 by 3 matrix here in the bottom left quadrant, right? So. I'm going to zoom down just a bit. Okay, so for our restrained reactions, and remember this is a column vector, we need our S sub R U matrix. And our S sub um, R U matrix, I'm going to write really quick, is 1 over 12. Ooh, that's an ugly looking 12. 1 12th, 0, 0, uh, 0, 0, 1 12th, uh, 1 over 96, 0, 0. 7 over 8, 64, uh, 1 over 54, 0, uh, negative 1 over 54, uh, 0, 1 over 54, uh, 0, negative 1 over 54, uh, negative 7 over 8, 6, 4, and then finally 0, 0, uh, negative 1 over 96, right? So this is our S sub R U matrix. And remember that has an EI pulled out of it. And then with that, we're going to multiply our uh, delta sub U matrix, which is this matrix right here, this column vector right here. And that's 1 over EI times 1728 over 7, 0 negative 17 28 over 7 right and then from that we're gonna subtract our joint load restrained uh, column vector which is this guy right here and remember we calculated that a little while ago it's this matrix right we use the unrestrained for the deformation now we're using the restrained joint load for our reactions and that's our 150 negative 150 150 negative 33 so I'm going to write that here. I'm going to write negative 150, uh, 150, uh, negative 33, uh, negative 51, negative 36, negative 51, and negative 33. Okay? <clears throat> and notice that the EI cancels out. And if we do our matrix uh, multiplication and then subtract from that, um, oh, and then there's actually another thing. Notice that this is a, a seven by three matrix, right? Seven rows, three columns, and this is a, a three row by one column matrix. And if we, there's a, there's a quick check here we can do to make sure things are working right. If we multiply a seven by three, um, and a 3 by 1, we should get a 7 by 1. 7 rows, 1 column. And how do we know that that it's a 7 by 1? Well, you look at these two numbers, and the outside, the left, the, I guess the outside numbers uh, will give us the dimensions of the resultant um, column or resultant vector, right? Or resultant matrix, sorry. 7 by 3, 3 by 1 gives us a seven by one that makes sense right because this is a seven by one right matrix column vector so from that we can subtract this seven by one and if we do our matrix algebra right here we'll get one one nine four over seven negative one one nine four over seven uh, two forty nine over seven fifty three uh, 188 over 7, 53, and then finally 249 over 7. Okay, 
these numbers correspond to the restrained degrees of freedom. So we had 1, 2, and 3 were unrestrained. So this is going to be 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And these are the reactions happening at these restrained uh, degrees of freedom. And if there's a negative sign, that just means when we drew the degree of freedom diagram, uh, we assumed positive. It just means we're, it's going in the opposite direction. So we start here at 4. 4 was... Um, 1194 over 7 uh, kip foot and that means it's gonna go in the direction we assumed it to be and then our next one was 5 and that was negative 1194 over 7 and that means it's just going the opposite direction from what we drew here and then reactions 6 through 10 were 249 uh, over 7 actually you know what let me just draw the reactions up here uh, so for number or degree of freedom number four, we got um, 1194 over seven kip foot, and for this one we got 1194 over seven uh, kip foot, and then for A we got or you know delta six or the reaction corresponding to degree of freedom number six, uh, we got. 249 oops that looks like a 299 249 over 7 kips uh, for B we got uh, 53 kips for C we got uh, 188 over 7 kips uh, this one we got 53 kips and then finally for E we got 249 over 7 kips and this makes sense right the beam and the loading and everything they're all symmetrical so you have a 53 and a 53 at B and D a 249 over 7 at A and E uh, the moments here at the ends are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction they're both resisting load right so really uh, equation number two here the restrained reaction gives us the reactions that we're looking for and which are all of these and again if it's if you see a negative, that just means it's going in the opposite direction of what we assumed our degree of freedom to go. Okay, so in the third video, or I'm sorry, in the next video, uh, we're going to look at equation three and figure out uh, what that equation means and how we can use it. So, see you in the next video.